this morning, uh, since we cannot be together, um, we're going to use a guided prayer um, that will help us worship together and to lift our eyes um, to heaven and to lift our needs and our joys to God and in uh, let us worship together in the presence of the living God. Psalm 33, 20 through 22 says this, We wait in hope for the Lord. He is our help and our shield. In him our hearts rejoice, for we trust in his holy name. May your unfailing love be with us, Lord, even as we put our hope in you. Let's close our eyes for a minute and in our lives um, and think about in our lives there's all, there will always be times of uncertainty and turbulence. During these periods, it's hard for us to remember that we are called to be calm. Anxious thoughts about the future continue to swirl around in our minds. But God reminds us in this scripture that we read that it is he who is our help and shield and that we are to trust in his holy name. May you spend these next few minutes in quiet, forgetting about all the noise that surrounds us, the disruptions that have occurred, and focus our eyes upon Jesus and his unfailing love. Psalm 46, 1 through 3 says this, God is our refuge and strength, an ever-present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam, and the mountains quake with their surging. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy place where the Most High dwells. God is within her. She will not fall. God will help her at the break of day. Nations are in uproar. Kingdoms fall. He lifts his voice. The earth melts. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. In these next few minutes, I want us to close our eyes. And I want us to spend a minute reflecting on how God has been with us throughout our lives. How he has carried you through difficult times and difficult trials. Call upon him to be your strength during these days. We are urged in scripture to pray for those in authority and those in leadership. 1 Timothy chapter 2 verses 1 through 4 says this, I urge you then, first of all, that petitions, prayers, intercession, and thanksgiving be made for all people, for kings and all those in authority that we may live peaceful and quiet lives in all godliness and holiness. This is good 
and pleases God our Savior, who wants all people to be saved and to come to a knowledge of the truth. In these next few moments, I want us to pause and I want us to turn our eyes upon Jesus. I want us to pray and ask for wisdom and guidance for those that are making decisions in the days ahead. May we close our eyes and pray for our national government. Pray for our state government. The leaders in our community. John 15, 13 says this, Greater love has no one than this, to, day, to lay down one's life for one's friends. This morning, I want us to think about the many health care workers that are putting in countless hours tending to the needs of patients, caring for those that are sick and caring for their needs, answering questions that may have no answers. Pray for each health care worker who works daily and puts their all into their job and their effort into caring for others. I want us to give thanks for them this morning and ask God to provide for their families and to bless them during this time. Many people during this time, especially the elderly who are in nursing homes, those that are homebound, that cannot um, get out um, of their homes because of their compromised immune system, they're experiencing limited visitation in these days from family and friends. May we pray for the next few minutes for them and for anyone who is experiencing isolation, who is experiencing loneliness in these days. And may they be reminded of the psalm that comes from chapter 139, verses 7 through 10, that says this, Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I go up to the heavens, you are there. If I make my bed in the depths, you are there. If I rise on the wings of the dawn, if I settle on the far side of the sea, even there your hand will guide me. Your right hand will hold me fast. May we pray for those who feel isolation and loneliness in these days.
I encourage you to be the hands and feet of Christ during the, these next few weeks. Will you consider sending a card at some point this week to those that you know that are homebound, that are in a nursing home, in order to lift their spirits and to allow them to know that they are not alone. During Jesus' earthly ministry, there were many times that he stopped along the way to pray for the sick, for healing. God is the one we turn to in our sickness, and we turn to him and ask for healing. He is our great physician. I want us to pause and pray for those that are sick with any kind of illness to be healed and to be restored. Hear this scripture. Is someone among you in trouble? Let them pray. Is anyone happy? Let them sing songs of praise. Is anyone among you sick? Let them call the elders of the church to pray over them and anoint them with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer offered in faith will make the sick person well. The Lord will raise them up. If they have sinned, they will be forgiven. Therefore, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. Let us pray for those that are sick and that need healing. Let us pray together the way we were taught to pray, saying, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us of our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you, and the Lord keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you, and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you, and give you peace. Amen.